afternoon to everybody. My name is Lazarus Amkeshe, and this is another edition of the Namibian a Conversation where we unpack issues that are very important to the national interest. And today, in the studio, I'm joined by Finance Minister Ipumbu Shimi, as well as Elvis Katua. Elvis is an economist at Simonis and Storm. And today, we're really going to unpack um, the budget, the national budget, is stable by the minister this Wednesday. Um, Finance Minister, it's very good to have you, Elvis. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for inviting us. All right. Um, let's get right into it. All eyes have been on you, the minister, last week, um, giving pre-budget notes, and as well as this week um, on the all, all, overall budget. Um, maybe just tell us, two days have been passed since you've tabled the budget. How do you feel? Well, this is a the time when we sit back and um, listen to our stakeholders, yep. um, listen to the commentaries. Mm -hmm, yeah. um, these commentaries are very important for us going yep. forward as mm -hmm. to what, how, how, how do we adjust as, yep. we, as we go along? Because uh -huh. um, with everything that you do, you need to adjust as we go along. Yeah, so yeah, we yeah. we're just we we um, collecting all this, all these commentaries, mm -hmm. all these analysis, mm -hmm. so that we we. Um, feed them back into our system, especially when it comes to the medium budget review. Okay, perfect. Um, Elvis, just to come back to you as well, um, how, this year's budget, how, what is your overall feel about it? How do you feel about the overall budget? Well, uh, Lazarus, I would like to first uh, congratulate the Minister on the budget he tabled. Mm -hmm. um, quite an impressive budget uh, given the circumstances we find ourselves in, uh, so it's a job well done there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a brief answer to the question, uh, my overall feel about the budget, given my pre-budget note that I, I've, I've expressed an expectation of, uh, of an expansionary budget that I expected to see. Yeah, uh, yeah. So um, perhaps uh, slightly underwhelming in my yeah. opinion. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. I think it's probably underwhelming. Mm -hmm. And I made was purposely by the fact that uh, perhaps the minister was trying to get back to the consolidation path mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. that, uh, that existed before mm -hmm. the, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. OK, perfect. The minister, to come back to you, um, Table, the, the budget that you tabled, um, you said the theme is boosting resilience and recovery. Um, I think we need to ask you really, what is the state of our economy? Um, within the, your speech, you mentioned as well that last year we, the economy contracted and then this year there's an expected recovery. Just help us take us through what really the state we're in and then how the future looks as well. Thank you, Lazarus. I, I think it, it, it's important to um, just um, look back a little bit and, and, and see where where we were last year and the, where we were before last year. Um, you know that, you know, the previous four years have been very, very difficult years mm -hmm. due to drought. The yeah. commodity super cycle came, came to an end in 2016. Mm -hmm. and, and since then, we have not really grown um, mm -hmm. significantly. The, the economy was actually stagnant. Yeah. And then COVID came. Mm -hmm. it, it found us on a weak spot. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and it, it actually made the situation worse. So, um, as a result of COVID, the economy contracted by about 7.3%. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a deep cut in, in, in output. Um, yes, yeah. um, and, and, and therefore, um, it, it, this is something that is unprecedented. Mm -hmm. Not only in Namibia, it was a global problem. So mm -hmm. even the global economy as a whole actually contracted by about 3.5%. Uh, um, so what are we seeing at the moment? We're seeing that we are clawing back some of those output losses that we have lost uh, last year. Mm -hmm. um, so we're expecting if the situation remains more or less the same. These are still projections. Mm -hmm. If the situation remains the same, we, we, are, pro we are starting to see some green shoots. Mm -hmm. um, so this year, um, we are projecting that the economy is going to grow around about 2.1, around about 2%, mm -hmm. yeah, give, and yeah, give and take. Yeah, 2%. 2, 2 so... If the situation remains the same, we are not hit by another pandemic, not hit by, you know, a, a, another uh, unforeseen event. Yeah. Um, so that more growth momentum will pick up mm -hmm. and we, we expect things to, or the, the economy to grow in the region of 3, 3.5%. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's more or less um, our outlook. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Elvis, on your side, um, as an economist and also in the private sector, does, does, does the stance also the same that, as what the minister has said, are you... Expecting a 2.1, I mean a 2% growth this year as well, or how, how for, first of all, in your assessment, the state of the economy, and also how do you look, um, how do you look, um, how is the future looking in your end? Well, well Lazarus, um, as per our latest um, house view at Simone Storms, uh, we had a, a cap about 3.0% uh, uh, yes. growth uh, in GDP it's a uh, for, 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 for this year. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, but however, now the uh, 
the, the kind of expectations we see in, in the actual GDP output. Yeah. Uh, we don't necessarily expect that to filter very, very fast to, mm -hmm. to, to the fiscals. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's where we remain a bit uh, skeptical on, uh, on the revenue projections uh, going forward. The, the, this is, uh, the pandemic has left many, many business uh, um, closing down mm -hmm. uh, or having salary freezes uh, and, and most people facing uh, retrenchments. Mm -hmm. uh, so that in return is, is what we expect to have an immediate impact uh, on the fiscals uh, this year going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, all in all, uh, y y yes, uh, w although we, we have a better projection in GDP yeah. growth uh, <laughs> than, than the Minister of Finance, mm -hmm. uh, we expect uh, to see some challenges of, uh, of revenue collection going forward. Okay. Um, coming back to you, Minister, um, the budget you tabled, you said it has three, domain, three main domains. The first one is vaccines, the acquisition, and distribution thereof. And the second aspect is to um, support the economic recovery. And then the third one is to ensure um, essential public services provision, especially you've also touched a little bit on, 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 on the drought situation in, in, in the Kunene region. Maybe just help us expand those three domains and how they really filter in this year's budget. Mm -hmm. So, Lazarus, the, the biggest war that you have to win at the moment yeah. is a health war mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. everything revolves around that. If, yeah. If we do not get the vaccine or get the population to be vaccinated, mm -hmm. we will be forever be uh, vulnerable to COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And as you know, COVID-19 affects mobility. Yeah. Um, so it will affect productivity. Mm -hmm. um, it will affect our um, tourism sectors, for mm -hmm. instance, and all other sectors that are, that are impacted by the fact that um, you know people are not able to move freely. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So. so Priority number, number one, one is, 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 is to get, get stability, stability on that front. front. In, in other words, we need to get the vaccine, vaccine we need to get, get our people, people vaccinated. Mm -hmm. um, we can free up the economy. Mm -hmm. That's one. The second thing is that we, we, when our people are vaccinated, even, even foreigners mm -hmm. and visitors mm -hmm. will be uh, more free to come to Namibia. Mm -hmm. Uh, because they know that we are not going to give them the, the, the virus. Yeah. So that, that will help to also unlock the, the, the tourism sector, for instance. Mm -hmm. So that's why that's, that's priority number one. That's mm -hmm. why you have seen um, the health sector. Um, we maintain more or less the same level of spending. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, we have actually um, included um, an additional budget item to buy the vaccine. Mm -hmm. So of course, that's, that's really for, for, for that, that's key. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's key for us to, um, to support e economic recovery. Yes. The, the the second thing, of course, um, we, we we need we, we need to um, reform the economy in mm -hmm. such a way that um, the economy is first of all you mm -hmm. expand the existing production capacities. Yeah. There are some sectors that have got potential, but mm -hmm. we need to mobilize all those you know productive forces, mm -hmm. free them up yeah, yeah. Where, where there are some shackles. Mm -hmm. we, we we need to remove those shackles so that uh, we we free up some of some of those um, productive part of the economies. Mm -hmm. The other part is, 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 of course, thinking long term, mm -hmm. is to look at new engines of growth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where else can we jump into? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Some of our engines of growth have, have been weak. Mining, mm -hmm. for instance, is, mm -hmm. is, is, um, it, 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 it's, it's one of, our, of such sectors. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the mining, the, the commodity super cycle, I mean, not a super cycle, but the commodity sector may still recover. Yeah. Um, so that will help us a little bit, and then maybe some of our mines can can still expand production. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, we we need to continue to create a conducive environment, especially for the commodity sector, mm -hmm. because when it recovers, you also want to remain competitive, because this is a competitive game. Yeah. Yeah. So you make you need to make sure that your environment is uh, investor friendly, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the investors can go elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that that we need to continue to make those important reforms so that we mm -hmm. can support, you know, the existing engines of growth, but also. Mm -hmm create a better environment for, yeah. for new engines of growth. Mm -hmm. um, the other one is, of course, it's obvious we know um, government has to function as a government. Yeah. Yeah, the provision of, of, uh, of, of, of public goods will have, will have to continue mm -hmm. because schooling will have to continue mm -hmm. and, and therefore you need to spend money on education. Mm -hmm. yeah, peace and stability need to be maintained mm -hmm. on, or law and order needs to be yeah, maintained. Yeah. You, know, you need to support the police and the army. Mm -hmm. You need to support you know, um, you know, the the basic functions of uh, civic functions of government. People yeah. need to get their IDs and stuff like yeah. that. So those things have to continue. So and therefore you don't want to see a disruption mm -hmm. in the basic uh, government services because that's what is going to make the economy tick. Because if the public goods are not being provided, 
it means something is missing in the economy. Mm -hmm. Important ingredient, ingredient is missing in the economy, okay. and therefore the economy will not recover. It's, it's, it's very good that you touched on, on the fact that mm -hmm. there's a need to revive that investor friendliness in the country. Um, and I think, Elvis, I'm coming to pose to you. Um, how has our business environment um, been towards investors? Is it, is it that conducive? Um, well, Lazarus, is, uh, to be quite frank, uh, no. no. Short, short answer. No, not quite. Uh, okay. I, I think it lies within the priorities, uh, really, of, of not only the Minister of Finance, mm -hmm. uh, but you know the the whole central government as a whole. You know, uh, in terms of policy and going yeah. forward. I think uh, n not so long ago there were some uh, news covered in in the local media mm -hmm. about Namibia's uh, business um, environment and yeah, yeah. competitiveness mm -hmm. uh, index, mm -hmm. uh, where we have. Uh, went uh, way way down mm. um, and uh, I, I think one of the biggest thing that the burning matter there was the ease of doing business uh, mm -hmm. in general like say, it's, it's just so cumbersome that you have to you have to jump through so many hoops uh, and then in that regard uh, it, the business environment in Namibia hasn't mm -hmm. been that friendly mm -hmm. um, and then of course now once you once you set up all this uh, you know Apart from the having one of the highest uh, tax rates, uh, corporate yeah. tax rates uh, mm -hmm. in um, in the region, mm -hmm. uh, we also introduce a dividend uh, tax. And, you know, so so for a private investor, yeah. uh, in an opinion, it's it's like saying, you know, come set up your business here, but now we are going to tax on your on more of your gains, especially mm -hmm. uh, on the business and going forward. Mm -hmm. So, in that regard. Um, so far, uh, no, uh, our business environment business hasn't environment been hasn't not. been friendly to investors as much, uh, mm -hmm. but still competitive, still mm -hmm. competitive nonetheless. I think we have had this, uh, most of these uh, bottlenecks mm -hmm. around for quite a while now, mm -hmm. close out to over a decade, uh, mm -hmm. and, and and we are still probably second to to, to, to South Africa in the region mm -hmm. when it comes to competitiveness and so forth. So, uh, yeah. Okay, at least you are good, but then I think, like Minister, you rightly put it, I think there is a need for an improvement on that angle. Um, now let's go deep into the budget. Um, I'm really, like Elvis said at the beginning, he was looking forward to seeing a more um, a budget that is kind of expansionary. But what I what we saw from your tabling is last year we tabled the 72.8 billion, and then this year a little bit down, five billion down. Um, is is somebody forcing your hand? <laughs> I wonder who is somebody who is forcing my hand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. You see, Lazarus, um, conventional wisdom is that um, mm -hmm. when when you are in a crisis, mm -hmm. government should actually loosen the schools. Mm -hmm. But there's a proviso to that. Mm -hmm. So if you can afford it, yes. It's the issue of affording. Yeah. So affordability. So one way, one side I, I hear as as Namibians complaining about rising debt. Mm -hmm. On the other side, I hear saying we need to, we we need to expand spending. So mm -hmm. those two things you cannot reconcile. Mm -hmm. So it means if um, if you increase your expenditure. And your revenue is down because you don't create revenue. Revenue is created by by economic activities. Mm -hmm. um, if your in your revenue is down, it means it means the gap between revenue and expenditure is going to increase. It means yeah. the deficit is higher. It mm -hmm. means debt is going to grow faster. Mm -hmm. um, so you are left with one option. Mm -hmm. If you don't have any any um, space, fiscal mm -hmm. space. In other words, you don't have savings mm -hmm. because, as I said, this already found us in a weak spot. Yeah. If you don't have savings, mm -hmm. what, what option do you have? So either yes. you increase your debt, mm -hmm. and people will probably stop giving you money because yeah. they, your <laughs> ability to, to pay, pay back, back will yeah. be impaired. Mm -hmm. um, or you try to slowly reduce your expenditure in a way that is not going to harm the economy. Mm -hmm. um, because what you're trying to do is that, of, of course, capital expenditure should still continue, although, mm -hmm. it, of, of course, it's not growing by a significant degree, yeah. but we still maintain a, a certain level of capital expenditure. Mm -hmm. What we're really trying to reduce is consumption. Mm -hmm. and, go, and going forward, is, mm -hmm. that's what we need to focus on. Mm -hmm. How do we ensure that um, our expenditure is actually in going into things that are going to help the economy mm -hmm. to grow? Mm -hmm. uh, because consumption is a leakage yeah. most, most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, when I buy things here, most of the things will come from outside, and that mm -hmm. money leaves the system. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it has left the system, it has not created Anything. additional yeah. capacity for the economy to grow yeah. um, and, 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 and therefore that's what we need to, mm -hmm. to, to care. So the, 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 the thinking is that yes, we have a difficult delicate balance to maintain, mm -hmm. um, our revenue is down, mm -hmm. um, we need to see where we can cut, mm -hmm. especially on the consumption side. Okay. Yeah. Um, Coming back to you, Elvis, um, you said you're looking forward to an expansionary budget and then the minister just rightly said no one is forcing his hand. Um, yes. but 
if you had to force his hand to, ex to, 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 to really push for that expansionary budget, what, what area, if I can put it that way, would you have seen that Minister would really try and increase more on, on, on the budget? Oh, well, okay. So back then uh, in 2016, uh, when mm -hmm. then Finance Minister Kalesha Sladvan uh, introduced the consolidation or historic measures uh, yeah. in the fiscals, mm -hmm. um, I was a bit skeptical because the approach rather was uh, to ruin expenditure, uh, mm -hmm. right? So, um, but uh, you know, at, at, at its basis, mm -hmm. uh, government expenditure usually drives up aggregate demand, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Therefore, by bringing uh, real uh, GDP growth, mm -hmm. right? Which, which is what the government is trying, uh, which is what uh, the minister, honourable minister, is trying to say, mm -hmm. is that when we spend, mm -hmm. then we spend into things that w would rather drive uh, economic activity, because mm -hmm. that's what determines government revenue, right? Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. if government expenditure is directed to things that will now uh, increase economic activity, mm -hmm. right? Um, then that's appropriate spending. So I, I'm, I was quite disappointed on the fact that when we look at expenditure, when we complain about debt in general, yeah. we we don't necessarily view it as, a, for example, I think there was a notion of jet, debt to GDP ratio. Yeah, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. So the debt to GDP ratio, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's ever increasing and people are just focusing mm -hmm. on debt. Uh, mm -hmm. But the basic thing that it's a ratio, right? Mm -hmm. It means there are two components at play. Yeah. GDP is at play mm -hmm. and debt is at, at, uh, at play. Mm -hmm. So if you borrow uh, to increase the GDP, Right, and mm -hmm. and hopefully you uh, your GDP growth um, outstrips uh, you, your debt growth. Yeah, yeah, growth. Then yeah. we will see some stabilization in the GDP mm -hmm. uh, debt to GDP growth. Mm -hmm. uh, now, not uh, to mention a few projects. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think about uh, just a, I think a month or two ago, mm -hmm. um, uh, the the Minister of Agriculture, uh, Carlos Schleiden, also um, came back and said why we um, some projects that were lined up for the Nakatal Dam. Yeah. The Nakatal Dam is starting mm -hmm. swing now. But uh, the government was too broke mm -hmm. to, to spend mm -hmm. into the irrigation systems that would have then had the ripple effect mm -hmm. on uh, crop production yeah. and, and the agricultural sector in the mm -hmm. country. Uh, I, I, would have, I would have loved to see a special provision in the government mm -hmm. increasing agricultural uh, allocation, mm -hmm. right? So in that sense, you, you, you'd want to go a once-off big investment into the Nakatal Dam yeah. irrigation system, mm -hmm. uh, make sure you have that uh, up and running. In the next two years, mm -hmm. we, we could easily see returns in there. Mm -hmm. Right, because then we are increasing, uh, we are spending or we are borrowing to spend in things uh, that will generate economic activity, so to say. Okay. So, can I prove it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I have seen people commenting on that, but I think it's yeah. important that uh, we, we, we understand um, the proper context. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure whether the minister really said we, we couldn't um, afford. afford to um, start the, the uh, agricultural activities okay. um, around Nekatal because we, we, we don't have money. I, mm -hmm. I'm not, I, I, I have not seen the statement, <laughs> um, but what I know for a fact is that mm -hmm. um, the minister is given an additional allocation mm -hmm. to um, finalize the purchasing of the land yes. and also to start with the basic infrastructure for, for Nekatal. So to get, to get the land ready mm -hmm. for agricultural activities. Um, so I don't think it's an excuse to say we don't have money, mm -hmm. I don't, um, and therefore that's why we, 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 we can't get uh, Nekata restarted. I okay. think uh, the, there is enough provision made mm -hmm. for, for the minister to do what, what he, whatever he needs to do okay. to be able to get, um, to get Nekata started. Okay, let's, yeah. let's, let's park Nekata for now. Yeah. Um, but I really just want to run um, through the, the numbers um, mm -hmm. of different allocations. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing the health ministry with 8.1 billion, I think mm -hmm. it's the highest following the, 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 the basic education ministry, and then we have gender and poverty and social welfare, 5.4 billion, mm -hmm. home affairs, so safety and social security, 5.7 billion, defense, for the first time decreasing, 5.4 billion. Mm -hmm. um, let, let's pause a little bit on defense. Why was that the decrease? Why was there a decrease? Ever since then, um, the former minister had said there were some several contracts the government had entered into with um, within the defense ministry that was kind of Government had to provide um, for those, and that's, that's why there was an increase in, in, in the budget allocations over the years. Did these contracts not come to an end, or why was there a sudden cut? I think you must call the Minister of Defense here to come and ask him. No, no. <laughs> well, some of those contracts are still running. Okay. Uh, they have not come to an end. I think the biggest, the biggest uh, taker of money in defense uh -huh. is not really contracts. Okay. Contracts are very minute. Uh -huh. Uh, the biggest taker of money is um, is is the people salaries salaries. Okay. So the people part takes up probably about ninety percent of, mm -hmm. if not more, then maybe ninety five percent of what what we spend on defense. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know that for the past five years, defense has actually not recruited. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah? But you have people leaving the system. Mm -hmm. um, so this, this year, they have actually come to a, sta a stage where they are saying, we are now running out of actually uh, human resources to be mm -hmm. able to, for us to discharge our function. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so the conversation was that, you know, um, we have people leaving the system, mm -hmm. um, should we recruit? Um, our, our position was that given the, the position where the economy is, mm -hmm. it is not the right time to recruit. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and therefore, we, we need to generate some savings because mm -hmm. we need to, to, we need some savings yeah to redirect those savings to, um, to some important um, sectors such as, such as health, for instance. Mm -hmm. That's why in the budget statement I said, we are beefing up, up our health defense. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore, part of the money that we are taking out from defense, from the Minister of Defense, we are actually reallocating it to the purchasing of the, of the vaccine, for instance. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's defense, but defense in a different sense. <laughs> <laughs> so that's okay. where the savings are coming uh -huh. from. It's uh -huh. basically, they, we have not allowed them to recruit what, what they, they, they wanted to recruit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then going on to the, to the numbers again, we have justice and the judiciary with a combined 862 million, public enterprises 733 million, mm -hmm. the Prime Minister's office 417 million, National Assembly 172 million, 117 million, excuse me. Mm -hmm. and then we have political parties 103 million. Mm -hmm. Does that justify? At 103 million. What? What? Why are we giving politicians 103 million? <laughs> now, the, the the money that goes to the to uh, political parties is, uh -huh. is a formula. It's it's based on revenue. It's one percent of revenue. Okay. Yeah. So it is not something that we we wake up and say, today we want to give 103 <laughs> to political parties. Yeah. Yeah. So it's based on what level of revenue are we going to generate this mm -hmm. year? And if um, and, and and therefore whatever goes to the political parties will be the, pers the, the, the you know that percentage, the percentage that goes yeah. to to, um, to political parties. Okay. So the fact that revenue has gone down, mm -hmm. the, that amount will will be It'll lower decrease, compared yeah. to last year. To last year. Yeah. At least that's a good one. Yeah. And the, the political. I'm not sure whether that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> political think... parties will not be very happy <laughs> with you. And then we are seeing AgriBank with a 90 million allocation, mm -hmm. the Namibia Revenue Agency with a 79 million. Mm -hmm. Um, UNAM 851 million, NAST 488 million, and then NASFAF mm. 1.2 billion. Um, Elvis, if I can ask you this, um, maybe you are also you also probably funded, uh, and I'm going to put you on the spot here. Maybe you also funded by NASFAF. Did you pay back your loan? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, he, he must tell us now. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yes. Uh, probably funded by NASPAF. Not uh -huh. probably, actually, I was, I was funded by NASPAF. Uh, you know, that's one of the, um, my biggest uh, gratitude uh, uh -huh. towards uh -huh. the, the, the government. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it is quite a good system uh, mm -hmm. running up in there, although there are some bottlenecks mm -hmm. that needs to be addressed in that yeah. regard. Uh, and yes, uh, the, the process of, uh, of uh, them communicating uh, mm -hmm. To, to former students to, to start pay bank, they only mm -hmm. started about I think two years ago. Mm -hmm. They contacted me, uh, but I haven't heard uh, from them since. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yes, if if uh, I think one of the biggest problems with NASFAF was mm -hmm. the, the their debt recollection or mm -hmm. debt settling mm -hmm. services, which mm -hmm. which was non-existent uh, mm -hmm. like about two years ago. Mm -hmm. So in that regard, yes. Okay, uh, Minister, if mm -hmm. if if I can come back to this question, mm -hmm. we are seeing um, a lot of. Um, students, there was one that appeared in the social, I mean, in the, in the local media this year, um, mm. just this week, mm. that he was unable to get funding. And then all of a sudden, NASA came on board to say, we are going to provide this student with funding. Mm. Can you, this 1.2 billion, do you, is there a way we, we could really ensure that this 1.2 billion really goes to the correct people and on time. I think last year we saw mm. students demonstrating as well that they needed the refund money, mm. they needed tuition money was paid late. Mm. What is really the issue with NASFAF? Well, I, I, I wish you could call them to come and talk to them. Um, <laughs> but what I can, I can mention is that mm. NASFAF is being, is being restructured at the moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, cabinet took a decision that we, first of all, we need to review the, the, the um, the funding policy mm -hmm. and who qualifies. Mm -hmm. um, the the benchmark was actually reduced. I'm mm -hmm. not sure whether the, the, whether the minister of ICT has actually announced this this decision mm -hmm. by cabinet. Because uh, previously, for you to be able to qualify for funding, your mm -hmm. parents should earn not more than seven hundred yeah. 
750, if I'm not mistaken. 150, I think. Yeah, no, I think 750,000 okay, okay. or 700. Okay. It has now been reduced to 500. Okay. Yeah, um, um, so in, in, in other words, you know, the people who, uh, you know, have got a high income, mm -hmm. uh, whose parents have got a high income will not be able to qualify. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's one. The second thing is that now NASFAF has been told mm -hmm. To strengthen their collection system, so mm -hmm. they hopefully they are, they are going to, to speak to Mr. <laughs> Katu soon. <laughs> and, okay. and, and, and thirdly, we actually want to restructure NASPAF in such a way mm -hmm. that the collection part will become the, responsib the responsibility of the Minister of Finance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and maybe there in there lies an opportunity because you know if, if somebody starts working, mm -hmm. we can also look at the text database and mm -hmm. you know reconcile Capture those, and, and then we can say ah. Uh -huh. Yeah, this gentleman has started wo started <laughs> working now, so they, they can actually NASPAF can start to collect their money. Uh -huh. So we we, we, we we are we are going to look into all those, uh -huh. and, and 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 what I also want to to see one day is uh -huh. that NASPAF should be able to, you know, register the applicants or no, in uh -huh. fact admit the applicants, uh -huh. yeah, before the academic year starts, uh -huh. yeah, so that when a child goes to the university. Uh -huh. They already have registration money, mm -hmm. so they don't have to look for registration money mm -hmm. um, to to register because mm -hmm. that's currently what is happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you apply it at, at NANSFAF, NANSFAF will give you a letter of an acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. th that way, you are you know you are able to register. You know, you the, the amount that you are going to to um, to, to pay is mm -hmm. is going to be lower than somebody who is not who doesn't have an acknowledgement letter. Yeah. But it's still a, a substantive amount of money that you mm -hmm. have to find somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my my expectation is that one day we'll be in a, 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 a you know in a, a, in 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 a situation where if you are admitted by NASPAF, mm -hmm. NASPAF should be in a position to give you registration money. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and therefore you can register. Mm. And, 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 and therefore this issue of paying towards the end of the year, mm -hmm. when you actually, you are done with the academic year, mm -hmm. it, doesn't make, it doesn't make much sense to me. Mm -hmm. People should actually get, if you have accommodation, you get mm -hmm. your allowance mm -hmm. throughout the period so that you can settle your bills on time. Mm -hmm. you, you have books that you need to buy, if, yeah? So those things have to be given, mm -hmm. you know, during the year, not at the end of the year when Many of the students actually just use money to buy, sell nice cell phones and, and, <laughs> and, and buy booze. <laughs> okay. Um, students, you've heard no buying booze with NASFAF money. Um, comrade Minister, um, are we in Parliament? You're not in Parliament, so I can't call you Comrade. Um, but to come back to the debt question, mm -hmm. um, you said in your speech that debt is expected to reach around 140 billion at the mm -hmm. end of this fiscal year. Mm -hmm. I think, let me start with you always first. Um, how bad is 140 billion? Okay, just, just before we, we go to 100, in fact, there's something that um, we are going to issue a correction. Okay. Yeah, and you, you'll probably see the, um, the statement coming from mm -hmm. Tonateni. Mm -hmm. We just spotted that some of our tables actually didn't have wrong numbers, I mean, um, correct numbers. Okay, okay. Um, so that is, I think, it's going to be around about 126. Oh. 126. 126, yeah. now moving, I think, to 130 and then 140, okay. something there. So the 140 is actually the outer year. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, but that will be corrected. To, um, I, I believe the statement will come out today. Okay. Yeah. But it's still but a big the, number. The, 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 yeah. The, the direction of travel is the same. So okay. I think, yeah. yeah. So uh, It's uh, a magnitude. Well, to, to answer your question, yes. that is, uh, I would like us to, to go back to to the numbers that you're running. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it's one thing to look at them, you know, as uh, by, I think the minister attempts them by vote, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, the office of the pre president gets this much, minister yeah. of that gets that mm -hmm. much, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but if, if uh, there's another classification that's very important there, um, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, the classification uh, that goes uh, by uh, the different expenditure groups, yeah. right? So where you have like uh, the wage bill, uh, mm -hmm. personal expenditure mm -hmm. and so forth. So uh, I, I think what, what really, really needs uh, to be commended here um, or, or, or to be given credit to the minister is, is that we're seeing for the first time uh, that uh, that wage bill uh, sees a, a, a contraction. Uh, so mm -hmm. I think over the mid day it, 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 it ever is a contraction of about 0.2%, um, mm -hmm. right? And currently is, uh, the contraction, according to my numbers, stands at 0.8% uh, and then 1.4% mm -hmm. uh, contraction in the, in the wage bill. How that's uh, to be to be achieved? Uh, perhaps is the the lack of uh, recruitment that the minister mm -hmm. spoke about by, about the defence, which always used to get a big chunk of it. Yeah. Um, 
and also the the transfers to uh, public entities uh, mm -hmm. and departmental yeah. uh, government departmentals yeah, um, maybe, yeah. yes uh, that that also averages about a contraction of, of 6.8 percent so in mm -hmm. that regard so and this is in the operational uh, leg of, of the budget so mm -hmm. in that regard yes it's commendable you see uh, the stepping right direction from mm -hmm. the minister of finance mm -hmm. um, uh, they have obviously listened to the private sector economists uh, mm -hmm. trying to tell them you know uh, rather grow expenditure in mm -hmm. in in the developmental side and, mm -hmm. uh, and trying to rein in on 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 the operational side uh, with that being said I, i'm not sure maybe the minister is here now um, he, under the developmental side of the budget mm -hmm. there is a 2.4 billion allocation for vehicles mm -hmm. uh, 2.4 billion all right um, now the total mm -hmm. the, the total allocation to economic affairs yeah. uh, in these current years stands at uh, five um, 5.3 billion mm -hmm. the same as um, the uh, the defense yes yeah, right? Yeah. right so uh, now if in the economic affairs you see right about that uh, i think close to 1.2 1.3 billion mm -hmm. is to agriculture mm -hmm. and agricultural activities uh, mm -hmm. and forestry and so forth so mm -hmm. all that in, in the national accounts is like grouped in into the primary accounts mm -hmm. but you see that relative to uh, vehicle expenditure that's at uh, 2.4 billion uh, mm -hmm. although it's it's not in the operational budget so mm -hmm. under that you'll see nothing but if you go to the development budget i, do, I, I, I would like perhaps to have some clarity there mm -hmm. uh, where our priorities lies mm -hmm. uh, and now with that background mm -hmm. i, I want to I want us to to to, to revisit the, the the debt. So yeah. that, that kind of debt, yes. But again, uh, it's relative relative to what are you borrowing that debt for? Is it mm -hmm. relative to finance more vehicle financing, mm -hmm. um, or to finance the wage bill, or is it to finance uh, the public uh, entities? If that's the case, then uh, that's very concerning. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that, that's alarming. Uh, mm -hmm. But if it's to to finance uh, to to broaden our revenue uh, base, base mm -hmm. and more importantly to to finance uh, economic activities mm -hmm. um, then uh, perhaps uh, that can be better received because uh, i think at this point in time if you if you look at it uh, for the current uh, year and going out to the to the next fiscal year mm -hmm. i think the deficit or not necessarily the deficit but mm -hmm. the financing need Right. the financing requirement of the government is larger than any single revenue yeah. item. Mm -hmm. So if you just singly look at tax revenue, mm -hmm. or you individually just look at SAGU revenue, which used to account about, uh, for, I think it's now since at 42%, mm -hmm. all those revenues uh, in absolute terms mm -hmm. are less than the financing requirement for this year. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that regard, uh, I, I think we should be worried about where the debt is, is, is going to. Minister, you heard we should be worried if we are not spending in the correct way. Um, Quick question on the IMF loan. How are, where are we now? Are we expecting to get that that money soon, or <laughs> yeah, when exactly? Yeah. So I, I think that the we, we we are continuing with the conversation with the IMF. I mm -hmm. think we are making great pro progress. So mm -hmm. we are we are waiting to hear from them in the next three weeks or so. Okay. So um, we we quite positive that we are making good progress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think as soon as we we hear from the board of mm -hmm. the IMF. Mm -hmm. um, because you ultimately this application will have to go to the board and mm -hmm. we're quite positive that the board will um, respond will positively. Yeah. yeah. So I think what is important is that, because I, I hear people saying that, yeah, no, no, the defense is getting so much. Mm -hmm. well, why don't we just take money from defense and put, put the money here, mm -hmm. you know, in this sector? You know, this is really a journey. I mm -hmm. mean, when you say defense has got 5.4 billion, mm -hmm. um, as I said, 90% of that is people. Mm -hmm. So unless you're saying you are, you are, I should wake up today and say go to the Minister of Defense to go and fire people there. Mm -hmm. So there's no flexibility. There's no way that you can actually uh, realize savings there. Mm -hmm. You only realize savings when people are leaving the system, mm -hmm. unless you want to fire them. But firing them is just going to, be, uh, to make the situation mm -hmm. worse. Um, and, and just adding to the army of the unemployed that mm -hmm. are already there. Mm -hmm. Or you're going to, let, you, to pay them out. Now, mm -hmm. if you're going to pay them out, it means you have to find cash to pay yeah. them out. So it's not a straightforward situation because mm -hmm. I, I, I hear people complaining, why oh, just take the money from defense? Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Yeah, so I, I think we need to, to have the right context to understand mm -hmm. these things. Um, yes, with, 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 with regard to debt, as mm -hmm. we said, um, the only way that you can actually contain your debt is to mm -hmm. grow the economy. So mm -hmm. that's why we're trying really to, to um, push for structural reform so that we can get um, you know, the economy to grow mm -hmm. and also rein in your non-productive um, expenditure. Mm -hmm. and, th and, th and that's what we have been trying to do. Uh, obviously, there could still be opportunities for more, mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to things like, you know, the wage bill, for instance, that Mr. Mm -hmm. Gatua talked about, mm -hmm. 
the, the strategy has been don't recruit mm -hmm. only when it's really critical. Mm -hmm. So that's why you see the, the wage bill coming down. Mm -hmm. I have already given you the example of defense. Yeah. Mr. Katu, I'm not sure about, in fact, the position that we have taken is that we, the government is not buying any vehicle. So what you probably have seen in the development, because the vehicle, the, mm -hmm. the vehicle part, like my car, that will be operational. Mm -hmm. So you will not see that in the, in, the, in, the, in the development budget, because that's really a consumption item. Okay. That's okay. how it's counted for. So what you probably have seen there is some mm -hmm. equipments for, you know, some, some important um, agricultural activity or something. But I, I need to look at that because the, the development budget is compiled by the National Planning Commission, but mm -hmm. the principal position we have taken is that government is not buying any car. Ministries are not allowed to buy cars unless mm -hmm. it's really, very critical. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have not approved budgets for cars. As you can mm -hmm. see, we, even the ministers are actually driving very old cars. Not for census, maybe. But either way. Yeah, so I think we need to drill deeper in, in what you have seen, okay. those numbers that you have seen there. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. There's, there's one question. It's mm -hmm. even important that you, you, you mentioned the issue of unemployment. Mm -hmm. um, is there another 750 coming for um, the public, those that are unemployed, <laughs> as you did when COVID started? As, uh, should, should we expect another 750? The, the answer is no, because, you know, the 750 came because mm. of the lockdown restriction. Yeah. Yeah. And the logic was really that you, you have people mm -hmm. that are in the informal economy, mm -hmm. and now we have told them to go home. Yeah. How are they going to survive? How are they going to make sure that there is bread on the table? Mm -hmm. Um, so that's why the idea was hatched to um, give them something so that they, that they, can, they can sustain themselves. Mm -hmm. But now the economy is open, mm -hmm. so they, 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 should be able, they are able to engage in business activities. Mm -hmm. Of course, the income level in the country has, you know, has fallen, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and they may not be able to make the same business as before, mm -hmm. but at least they are, they are able to, to, you know, to go on with their lives and, mm -hmm. and, and go on with their businesses. And therefore, there's no more a uh, justifiable reason for, for us to pay them a 750. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's talk to the issue of the Anti-Corruption Commission. Yeah. Um, there has been talks again in the media towards the end of, I think the beginning of this year and towards mm -hmm. the end of last year as well, mm -hmm. that the ACC was underfunded. I think this year's allocation to the ACC was around about... Um, let me just get the correct 62. number. 62. 60 something million. Yeah, 62 million. 62 million. Is that's that sufficient for the, them? That's what I have read in, in, in the Namibian. <laughs> is, that, <laughs> is, is that sufficient for them? I think, I think it's the ACC budget. I think one of the key cases that is being dealt with by the ACC now is, mm. is the fish rate case. And I think it's a very big case. Yeah. But if you look, if you compare it to it with other agencies that I'd say they are, I don't want to reduce their importance. Mm. Um, such as, for example, the new development board got a bigger budget more than mm. the ACC. Are you saying is that all we could give the ACC? Because I think to maybe mid-year they're also going to come back and say we don't have enough money. Mm. Was that budget sufficient? Well, I, th I think let's let's explain it this way. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I, I, I read the 62 in the Namibian today in the <laughs> in the editorial. Um, okay. But you know what was a bit surprising is that in my budget statement, I actually mm -hmm. gave two figures. Okay. Yeah, I gave a 62, uh -huh. but I also said in my in the budget statement, uh -huh. this is in addition to the 11 million that was given a so few days two. ago yeah. from the contingency budget. Why did we do that? So the ACC came back saying that we first of all we agreed on the on the ceiling of sixty two. Mm -hmm. Then they went back and mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately they came to the media first before they came back to us. After we gave them a ceiling, um, they came to the media and uh, when we picked it up in the media we called them and say what's mm -hmm. happening here? Why don't you? Why you, if you need additional money why are you not talking to us? Why are you talking to the media? So then we started talking. So mm -hmm. we asked them that uh, how much do they need. Eventually mm -hmm. they came with a, with a number of 17 million. Mm -hmm. um, after looking at those numbers, we, we agree that 11 million can actually, mm -hmm. yeah, which could be, actually be enough. So we said instead of waiting for next year, mm -hmm. we actually have money in the contingency budget now. Mm -hmm. So to increase that ceiling is, again is going to mess up our, our, our numbers for the, for the next budget year. Mm -hmm. Let's give you the money now. Keep it in your accounts and you can use it. Mm -hmm. So. So in total, um, the, 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 the ceiling for next financial year for, for, uh, for, for ACC, ACC is, is 62 plus 11 million. So mm. I think it's 70, well, about 73. 73. Mm. Yeah, so that's a, the, the correct figure. Okay, and and that's what the Namibian should okay. quote. Not yes, it's 73 million. <laughs> yeah, Namibian should stop complaining about that. <laughs> it's not a complaint, it's, it's, a, it's a concern. But either way. Mm. Um, so, but again, again, the ACC should look at their own 
our own needs, mm -hmm. yeah? Because mm -hmm. given their current structure, that's more or less the money that they, 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 they were given. It's not that they, they ask for more, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah? But mm -hmm. if, you, if you have to ask for more, it means mm -hmm. you have to expand your structure. You need to say, I need more, more people, and mm -hmm. you need to justify that. And of course, that's not the, the baby of the Minister of Finance. Mm -hmm. yeah? if, you want, if you want to get more staff, you mm -hmm. go to the Public Service Commission, that's where you go and justify your case. Yeah. Yeah? That you, know, you need to expand your structure for ABC reason. Mm -hmm. So you don't start with the money, you start, <laughs> you start somewhere else. <laughs> okay. So once that is approved, then we look at the money. Uh -huh. yeah. there's, um, this I'm going to post to you both. Um, there's a tendency of, of several ministries um, mm -hmm. that tend to return money back to to, 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 to the Ministry of Finance. Are you encouraging that, um, that they should return? And I think on one hand, I think I'd also like to see when these ministers return money to, to Treasury, what is really the cost to the economy? Because ideally you'd want to see that that money is spent and then the economy gets moving. But how do you balance it? First of all, Minister, do you approve of them sending money back? Don't you just want to tell them this year, please don't return any money. Please spend all that you have. Well, a good budget rule is that mm -hmm. you must be able to execute your budget. Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Because that money was given to you for a reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah? You, you, are going to, you are going to use this money mm -hmm. in a way that is going to help the economy in yeah. one way or another. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So if you have not done so, it mm -hmm. means something which was meant to be done was mm -hmm. not done. Mm -hmm. And it means you have left the gap there. Mm -hmm. Unless you realize that in the middle of the process, um, this thing is no longer important. Mm -hmm. And, and then therefore, it's not wise to spend this money, yeah? Mm -hmm. Under certain, you know, special circumstances that, that can happen. But mm -hmm. as a general rule, mm -hmm. you actually want to execute your budget as much as possible, mm -hmm. yeah? You want to see 100% execution rate. Mm -hmm. uh, if anything, you know, people say the variance should be about 5%. Yeah. Anything beyond 5% of your budget, mm -hmm. either sp overspending or underspending, mm -hmm. it's something that people are going to frown upon, mm -hmm. yeah? So we don't encourage that, mm -hmm. but of course we also don't want to encourage people to to spend money unwisely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if um, if you realize that you know this money should not be spent, it's better to retain it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to say I made a mistake, mm -hmm. I thought I was going to implement this. Mm -hmm. I realize it's not important, mm -hmm. so let me retain the money. So mm -hmm. that way you are saving government money. But if you are retaining the money just because you have actually failed to implement, mm -hmm. then you are actually creating a problem for the economy. Well. Um my take is quite uh, slightly different because um, okay. the trend has been mm -hmm. that over the last, uh, I want to say well, over the last decade, mm -hmm. you'd see the, the execution rate of the development budget mm -hmm. substantially low, yeah, yeah. substantially low. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that happens every time. And then come mid mm -hmm. you always see reallocation from the development budget, mm -hmm. with under, with, with, which was highly, highly under-executed, mm -hmm. back to the operational budget. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, in that regard, I think um, perhaps the ministers or the portfolios have, have seen that over, over, over the years, mm -hmm. it was possible to, to reallocate from their development budget, which, mind you, they're taking away from future earnings, right? Mm -hmm. From the development budget uh, back to operational budget. So they, they would spend recklessly mm -hmm. uh, in terms of operations, operations right? Yeah. And then come mid-year, they run back to, to the fiscal and say, uh, look, uh, uh, unfortunately, we have spent more than what we're supposed to. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we've almost reached the ceiling of our operational budget. Mm -hmm. uh, but look, we only have a 10% execution rate on, mm -hmm. our, on our development budget. Is it possible to, 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 to reallocate the fund? Mm -hmm. And it's always been the case. Mm -hmm. Always, always it has been the case. So I, I think uh, for the minister to, to allow that to happen mm -hmm. has kind of actually encouraged um, uh, a deliberate yeah. under execution yeah, yeah. on the development budget mm -hmm. uh, in, in my personal opinion mm -hmm. so in that regard you, you uh, it comes back to uh, to perhaps set the ceiling mm -hmm. and if it's not ex if the development budget is not executed there's no reallocations yeah. perhaps it's only reallocation to the next budget mm -hmm. but not an increase in the operational budget ceilings uh, yeah. for, for the so ministers from, from, from development from development yes mm -hmm. uh, I would have liked to see uh, mm -hmm. such. Okay. Yeah. Again, again, just information there. We actually mm -hmm. very strict on reallocation. I think that not mm -hmm. that I think the, the <laughs> director general of the National Planning Commission does mm -hmm. not allow reallocation anymore. Okay. You can reallocate from development to development, not but not from development, development to operational. operational. Um, so if you look at the execution rate, it's still yeah, it's about eighty percent. I think for the development budget, mm -hmm. um, we see. Good enough, I think. Not too bad, but of course, one would want to see it in the region of ninety something mm -hmm. percent. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I think 
going forward, that's, that's what, those are the kind of numbers that we want to see. Mm -hmm. But we are very, very strict in terms of reallocation to develop, I mean, to operational expenditure. Okay. Yeah. Let's, lo let's look at the issue of taxes. I think one of the question, or one of the statements from your speech was that corporate tax is going to reduce. Um, the trend has been a 1% drop always. I'm not so sure if you're going to see that. Um, but other than the corporate tax that is set to reduce, um, what other new taxes were introduced? I think there was a statement on sanitary pads, um, VAT on uh, listed asset managers. Mm. Can you maybe take us through to um, the, the tax proposals you know, in the, yeah, that yeah. came through the budget? I, th I think you have mentioned them all. I think, mm -hmm. th th yes, we have made a commitment that we are going to um, consider reducing company tax. Mm -hmm. And um, the quantum will be revealed in the midterm review. So let's wait for the <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> for the midterm review. Uh -huh. um, we have also um, um, increased mm -hmm. the allowable deduction. Deductions, yeah. yeah. So that's also some kind of a tax flexibility that mm -hmm. we have created to encourage more people to save. Mm -hmm. um, because now you get a tax benefit, mm -hmm. a higher tax benefit mm -hmm. if you if you put money in in a pension fund or a, you know a educational policy. Yeah. Um, the other one you have mentioned is uh, the, the tax on sanitary pets. Mm -hmm. Again, when we we were consulting with uh, different stakeholders, mm -hmm. we also could talk to you, uh, Lazarus. <laughs> um, so the civil society mm -hmm. kept on emphasizing the need to zero rate um, sanitary pets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it's it's important for the girl child. Mm -hmm. Um, so we, we, we thought um, that that was a, a, very, a very strong point that they have mm -hmm. made, mm -hmm. and, 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 and we thought that that is something that we need to consider. So we consider mm -hmm. that. So we, that's why we made it as part of the of the tax reform proposals. Mm -hmm. um, but then we, we 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 have introduced new taxes, but for equity purposes, mm -hmm. yeah, for 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 um, dividends, for instance. Mm -hmm. Already, if you are a foreign shareholder, if you get your dividend. Um, it, it, a certain percentage yeah. is actually deducted. Mm -hmm. But if you are a Namibian shareholder, when you get your dividend, I think it's deducted. So we, we, we thought we need to equalize. Mm -hmm. Also, when it comes to um, when it comes to um, mm -hmm. to, um, um, to to um, VAT on mm -hmm. asset managers. Mm -hmm. So if you if you manage assets that are not listed on the stock exchange. Mm -hmm. You pay VAT, yeah, but, if, but you if you you if you manage assets that are listed on the stock exchange, you don't pay VAT. Mm -hmm. So we thought there is no equity there. There was mm -hmm. there was no fairness. So they, they, therefore we had to equalize. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not that it, that's a new tax. It's basically yeah. we just the principle is already there, mm -hmm. but so it was not fair yeah. for everybody. Okay. Yeah. Um, Elvis, um, do you think the new taxes? And I think that that should be our concluding remarks. Um, time is also not gonna end. Mm -hmm. um, the new taxes. The, the tax, um, the reduction in the corporate tax and also the dividend tax, um, help us, uh, private sector wise, um, is that fair, especially in tax and dividends? And also, um, how do you welcome the, uh, the possible reduction in corporate tax? Well, um, highly welcomed, right? Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes, highly welcomed. But mm -hmm. I, I think um, we are not in a position where uh, the Minister finds uh, itself in a, in a very precarious uh, situation. Whereby, you know, um, you would expect uh, for now, mm -hmm. right? You would expect going forward, uh, the, the budget deficit that was raised by the pandemic would somehow be funded to a certain extent uh, mm -hmm. by increasing taxes in the future. But the fact that we had such high tax rates, mm -hmm. maybe it should have been uh, more prominent for the ministry, a priority for ministry back then, mm -hmm. to to try and make our tax environment uh, more competitive. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in terms of the individual um, taxes. Uh, I would have expected to to, to see at least the, the, the adjustments of the uh, of the tax brackets tax by, table, tax bracket by, mm -hmm. by by inflation at the very mm -hmm. least. I don't think they were they were revised like in maybe over five years now. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. perhaps uh, uh, that that would have been highly welcomed. Mm -hmm. uh, but all in all, uh, yes, the the the, the tax uh, or the trajectory we were going. So remember, mm -hmm. this is this is the first of, of many. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, right. So uh, so w w we are. The, we are in the right direction. Mm -hmm. This is the right direction. I would expect uh, the Ministry of Finance now to pick momentum mm -hmm. on trying to to, to, to loosen uh, the tax parents on, on individuals and corporates. Okay. Um, final, final say question, um, Minister. You said in your speech, we owe it to our future generation to create a better Namibia for all. Is this true? I, 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 I believe so. I believe, I strongly believe that, uh, mm -hmm. that um, all of us share that responsibility mm -hmm. to do what is necessary mm -hmm. to create a better future for 
for the future generation. Okay. Um, and, and therefore, um, whatever we do at the Ministry of Finance, mm -hmm. whatever we do in your, in, in your role, <laughs> I, 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 I think we should all carry that responsibility. Uh -huh. Our view is that I think we are at the right time now. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a lot of reforms happening in the economy. Maybe the momentum is not strong enough, but mm -hmm. I think it's picking up. Mm -hmm. On the tech side, we're trying to reform. I mm -hmm. think the new number is going to be a, 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 a new experience, mm -hmm. yeah. So we, we, we're very confident that it's going to be a new experience. Yeah. Um, it's an experience where the taxpayers is going to be the epicenter of, of that institutions mm -hmm. in terms of education, in terms of customer service, mm -hmm. but also teaching the, the taxpayers to, mm -hmm. to you know, discharge their responsibility, yeah, responsibility of, of, of paying tax. Paying tax yeah. yeah. So that's one. And, and, and on the investment side, I think Mr. Katu has talked about the, the reforms to, mm -hmm. for you know, to ensure that we we um, increase the ease of, do, of doing business. Mm -hmm. um, so the creation of the investment promotion board, I think mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. uh, to equip it with the right people, I think that's now the challenge that we yeah. have to mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. undertake. Um, and, and the number of reforms that we are looking at, and we, that time when, when we had a discussion the other day, we we're talking mm -hmm. about looking at really how to transform the economy in yeah. new areas. I think mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, it's, it's still a difficult time, mm -hmm. but we just need to increase that momentum. I think mm -hmm. we, are, we, we know more or less what needs to be done. It's mm -hmm. a question of doing it and doing it faster. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Gazuo, final remarks. Well, um, going back to, to the budget, because yes. um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think we, we, it should serve its purpose. Uh, yes, you know, yes. the, we don't get so many uh, platforms uh, to, to India. <laughs> so, yes. Um, yes uh, uh, I would like to applaud uh, the, the minister. Uh, mm -hmm. My final remarks is perhaps to, to now pay attention uh, to, to what I've spoken about. So is that multiplier, um, uh, government spending multiplier mm -hmm. effect uh, mm -hmm. in the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and when you look at, uh, at absolute numbers, you know, mm -hmm. you, or, or rather ratios, mm -hmm. you'd know that there, there are two components at play mm -hmm. and not only focus on one. Obviously, uh, expenditure was more immediate to you. If it's the debt to GDP, you want to mm -hmm. you, you control your debt. It's, it's much more easier than controlling the GDP. But, mm -hmm. um, I, I want to emphasize on, on, the, on the general uh, public uh, that, mm -hmm. you know, running uh, a country or an economy's budget mm -hmm. shouldn't be the same as running a household budget, uh, mm -hmm. you know, where you don't necessarily just spend more than you earn. Uh, mm -hmm. I think for an economy, you probably ought to take chances, mm -hmm. uh, and those chances perhaps will drive or bring about uh, economic growth. Okay. Thank you so much. Finance Minister, any final words? Well, well I, I think we're the, the final word is really to say that for a long time, government has been driving the economy mm -hmm. um, and, and and government's role is actually not not to to, to be the investor mm -hmm. the government's role is to be an investor in public goods and mm -hmm. what are the public goods roads railways water infrastructure and things mm -hmm. like that so we have we have seen it in between 2012 and 2016 when mm -hmm. much of the momentum came from the from the government but that's not sustainable because government is funded by private sector mm -hmm. if private sector is not growing it mm -hmm. means there, there won't be any revenue coming in. Mm -hmm. So the emphasis now is ready to shift. Mm -hmm. That growth should be driven by the private sector. Mm -hmm. The government's role is, again, to invest in proper public goods that are going to support that momentum. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we want to see. And therefore, we want to encourage our private inv uh, investors, mm -hmm. Namibian investors, but mm -hmm. also invite foreign investors to come and partner with us mm -hmm. so that we can you know, increase that, mo that momentum for growth. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, um, Finance Minister, and thank you so much, Elvis, for coming through, giving your insight on the budget and just how the economy is, where we are, where we're going, and the need to create a better Namibia for all of us. Um, and that was it for today. Thank you for watching the Namibian Conversation. And until next time, cheers.